Are you in the market for a thickness, sir? You should probably stop watching this video then, because that's not what these are. What we do have here are our newest range of drum sanders. Now you hear me repeat this a few times throughout the process of this video. These are not thicknesses, they're not to be used as thicknesses, they're designed for much finer work, like getting smaller projects sanded down to a finished size. So we have these down as inch units. You've got the 16 inch on my right, you've got the 20 inch on my left. Again, freedom units, what that translates to in the rest of the world is Roughly 400 mil on my right, roughly 500 mil on my left. So those measurements are the max sanding capacity. They're not the overall width of the machine. Width of the machine is a little bit bigger, but uh, for safekeeping, we tend to tell guys that you know 400 and 500 respectively. So the similarities between the two include digital readout to a hundredth of a millimeter. Although again, it does require the operator to be operating it competently. So I'm gonna put that back on you guys. Uh, obviously your adjustment is just by hand. It has a manual depth gauge, but it, obviously it also comes with a digital readout just in case. They both feature two 100mm or four inch dust ports, which I would highly recommend you keep extraction hooked up to constantly whilst you are operating these machines. They both feature adjustable speed on the feed table. The spindles, however, constantly maintain a 1500 RPM speed though. So if you are, trying to take a little bit more off and get it a little bit flatter or your material is a little bit harder, make sure you wind the speed down, just give the machine time to process it properly. So for starters, 16 inch drum sander is a 10 amp plug, so it's perfect for you guys that are working at home in your garage. Uh, it has a 400 mil max sanding capacity, uh, which really translates to 800 if you were to flip around, if you're doing, for example, a countertop out of solid timber. You can just feed it through one side, flip it around, feed it through the other, giving you around about 800 mil capacity. The infeed table is variable speed. The spindle itself, however, maintains 1500 RPM constantly. So make sure that if you are operating one of these things and you've got quite, quite hard material to sand down, you just slow the speed on the infeed table down a little bit. Now the 20 inch or 500 mil has a 15 amp plug, which means that it's got a little bit more grunt behind it. But again, it's not a thickness, sir. So make sure that you take care with what you're doing. Now while the 16 inch or 400 mil may just have a fairly robust leg frame built underneath it, the 20 inch or 500 mil comes with a cabinet stand underneath, or as you can see, perfect for storage. So regardless of which machine that you're operating, remember that it is a sander and it does require constant dust extraction while in use because obviously the amount of dust coming out of these things, if you've ever used a belt sander, you'll know exactly how much chaos these can cause. So make sure that you are using at least a two horsepower dust extractor at a minimum, constantly. So you might be asking what are these machines mainly designed for? In my experience, it's a lot of guitar makers definitely find these, save them a lot of time and a lot of energy sanding. Uh, if you're doing things such as uh, draw boxes, if you can get these all, if you can get all your draw boxes sanded down flat before assembly, it'll save you a ton of time. Uh, we get a lot of guys who do beadings around their projects, so like 20 by 25 mil beading. This is a great machine for getting it sanded to exact measurements and consistent as well. So there's nothing more irritating when you're cutting beading on a table saw. You get burns, you get checks, you get tear out and then you get inconsistencies in your thickness. So a thicknesser, which these two are definitely not, will usually get your material down to about two to three tenths, uh, plus or minus accuracy, whereas these should get them quite down to maybe two to three hundredths of a millimeter precision. But again, it's on the operator. Make sure you're following it along with your verniers. So it's a fairly simple application. You've got your safety nut on the front, just loosen that off. Make sure it's super tight when you start the machine and operate it. The last thing you want is that opening up and all your dust spewing out everywhere. But just pop her open and you'll find the spindle here. I believe it's probably about you know 200 mil in diameter. But essentially how it operates is just cloth backed, uh, abrasive paper is wrapped around it uh, and then it's clipped into the sides here. My best piece of advice when you do pick one of these up is that you pull this piece of paper that comes with it off, make a template out of it, 
and then that'll save you a lot of time and headache down the road trying to fix one on properly. It's also very important to remember that you try to remove as much glue as possible before you feed it through, otherwise the sandpaper does tend to clog up and wear out much quicker. Another important feature of these is that, again, if you've used a belt sander before, you'll find that it chews up material extremely quickly. Uh, so for that reason, I wouldn't recommend going with any grit lower than 120. Uh, and if you're looking for a really nice finish surface, 180 and higher, and that's it. It will chew material out quickly, so even if it's a high grit, still be aware that it will take it off quickly. So as you can see, it does a cracking job. It'll get your material nice and flat and smooth. Uh, depending on the grit, obviously, you'll probably still need to give it a bit of a finish off sand. Uh, for you guitar makers, this is gonna save you a ton of time. As you can see with the, uh, with the short grain board, there's still a bit of work to be done on it. But if you were trying to sand that down flat by hand or with a, with a, you know, a hand plane, it's an absolute nightmare. That's just saved you a ton of work, a ton of cleanup as well. Again, you probably need a uh, slightly higher grit to get that finished off and nice and ready for oiling. Uh, and your beading as well. So if you had some job where you needed 40 lengths of the same material, if you don't have an apprentice, you have to sand this all yourself. And that's just gonna take tons of time, a lot of elbow grease, and you just it's, it's not a project that you look forward to, I, I would know. So that's where the drum sanders come in. You know, you can feed this through, set it to a certain height. If you're pushing 40 lengths through, they're all coming out exactly the same. It manages to ensure consistency across all your work. So a couple of key points to remember. This is not a thicknesser. It's only designed to take off hundreds of a millimeter at a time. It's designed to sand it and get it flat. Another key point to remember is that slower is better. If you push it through too quickly, you put, try to take off too much at once, you'll burn your sandpaper and waste more time fixing it up. Grit is key, anything below 120, you're gonna be taking off, you're gonna be spending more time getting your scratches out. Dust extraction is vital. It's not good enough to have it just set up outside uh, to let it blow away. All that's gonna do is blow it straight into your lungs, get it straight into your machine and ruin your afternoon. It's not a thicknesser, it's not. Don't use it that way. It's not supposed to be used that way. So don't think, oh, I can take three mil off at a time with this. That's not how it's designed to operate. It's a sander first, it's not a thicknesser at all. And that's it. So for more information, click the links below. Make sure you like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video. Cheers.